What's going on, Maine Salians, Maine Sailors, and the fine people of YouTube? If this video finds some of you quarantined currently and shelter in place, which is the entire uh, vicinity of California, some places, uh, I'm not, I don't believe there's any other shelter in places, but it's obviously drastically changing day by day. Um, I hope all is well, healthy and safe, um, enjoying your hobbies and spending time with your family. I know it's a hardship as far as financial uh, goes but I'm pretty sure we'll get through this. If not, may the odds ever be in your favor. So today, uh, last video, I gave you f my top five favorite werewolf movies. I figured I'd go to my favorite genre, uh, subgenre of horror, and that'd be vampire. Um, there's a lot of vampire movies I like, but these are my top five. It was really hard to pick, especially uh, number five, because there's a bunch that I would pick first. But number one is easy. I think it'll be everybody's favorite as far as... Uh, quality vampire movies go so let's get into my top five favorite horror vampire movies so number five uh it was a toss-up between the original dracula and um this movie which is house of dracula it, was, it is a 1945 American Monster crossover horror film released by Universal Pictures, part of their Universal Monster universe. And it was a direct sequel to House of Frankenstein, which was another good movie and an, another video we'll, we'll be doing in the future. It continued the theme of combining Universal's three most popular monsters. Frankenstein's monster, played by Glenn Strange, Count Dracula, played by John Carradine, and The Wolfman, played by Lon Janey Jr. Uh, the film, which was the seventh Universal film to feature Frankenstein's monster, as well, of the, as well as the fourth with Count Dracula and the Wolfman, was a commercial success. But was one of the last Universal movies featuring Frankenstein's monster, vampires, and werewolves, with the exception of the comedy Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein from 1948, in which all three appear again. So the cast includes Lon Chaney Jr., Martha O'Driscoll, ooh, the O'Driscolls, John Carradine, Glenn Strange, and Lionel Atwell. Uh, music was by William Lava, cinematography by George Robinson, edited by Russell Scottengarth, and released by uh, Universal Pictures on my birthday in 1945, December 7th. Don't forget it. Send me some gifts. My next film is a story written by Anne Rice, and um, this falls into the category of more of lust, the, the feeling of lust that uh, vampires have. It's not the hybrid killer vampires like in um, 30 Days of Night, uh, things like that, uh, Stake Land, not like that. These guys, they do murder, but they do it out of necessity. Uh, some do it out of sheer pleasure, but they're all beautiful people, long flowing hair, uh, eye shadowing, you know, those type of vampires. A uh, prerequisite to Twilight, I believe, really, because, you know, sparkly vampires and stuff. But this is this was more of a gothic grunge feeling uh, that Anne Bryce had written and they had portrayed and interviewed with a vampire. And it's a 1994 American gothic horror drama film directed by Neil Jordan based on Anne Bryce's 1976 novel of the same name, starring Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. The fo film focuses on Lestat, played by Cruz, and Lewis, played by Pitt, beginning with Lewis's transformation into a vampire by Lestat in 1791. The film chronicles their time together and their turning of 10-year-old Claudia, played by uh, young Kirsten Dunst, into a vampire. The narrative is framed by present-day interview in which Lewis tells his story to a San Francisco reporter. The supporting cast features Christian Slater, Antonio Banderas, and Stephen Ree. The film was released in November 1994 to generally positive reviews and was a commercial success. It received Oscar nominations for Best Art Direction and Best Original Score. Kirsten Dunst was also nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress for her role in the film. So coming in at number three is a cult classic, The Lost Boys, a 1987 American horror film directed by Joel Schumacher, produced by Harvey Bernhard with a screenplay written by Jeffrey Bohm. Janice Fisher and James Jeremias wrote the film's story. The film's ensemble cast includes Corey Haim, Jason Patrick, Keith, Kiefer Sutherland, Jamie Gertz, Corey Feldman, Diane Weist, Edward Herman, Alex Winter, Jameson Newlander, and Bernard Hughes. The film is about two brothers who move to California to a beach town and end up fighting a gang of young vampires. 
The title is a reference to the Lost Boys and J.M. Barry story about Peter Pan and Neverland, who, like the vampires, never grow up. Most of the film was shot in Santa Cruz, California. The film was released and produced by Warner Brothers on July 31st, 1987, and was a critical and commercial success, grossing over $32 million against a production budget of $8.5 million. That is four times, almost four times, um, what, it ta- what it took to make it and pay the cast. That's how much they made, four times more. The huge success of the film has spawned a franchise with two sequels, Lost Boys the Tribe and Lost Boys the Thirst, two comic book series and a future television series. Number two for me uh, is a movie, my go-to vampire movie. I love watching it. Um, and it was Vampires by John Carpenter. And it's a 1998 American independent neo-western action horror film directed and scored by John Carpenter and starring James Woods. It was adapted from the novel Vampires by John Steakley. Woods stars as Jack Crow, the leader of a team of vampire hunters. After his parents were bitten by vampires, Crow was raised by the Catholic Church to become their master slayer. The plot is centered on Crow's efforts to prevent a centuries-old cross from falling into the hands of John Valak, a reference to Valak played by Thomas Ian Griffith. The first and most powerful of all vampires. The film also stars Daniel Baldwin as Tony Montoya, Crow's friend and fellow hunter, Cheryl Lee as Katrina, a prostitute has a psychic link to Valak after being bitten, Tim Guinea as Father Adam, and Maximilian Schell as Cardinal Alba. The film was followed by two direct-to-video sequels, Vampires Los Muertes and Vampires The Turning. I love this movie because uh, there's a real gritty feel to it. It's out in the desert. Now, these uh, some of these vampires are as uh, Anne Rice, uh, especially Valak, the first one. All they think about when they see you is just attacking, like uh, savage animals. But, you know, not my favorite style of vampire, but it's definitely a great movie. James Woods is an incredible actor. So is Daniel Baldwin in it. And it's just a real gritty feel, old western type feel to it, but modern day. Number one, I feel like a lot of people will agree with me on this one, is Bram Stoker's Dracula. And it's a 1992 American Gothic horror film. Directed and produced by Francis Ford Coppola, based on the novel Dracula by Bram Stoker, it stars Gary Oldman as Count Dracula, Winona Ryder as Mina Harker, Anthony Hopkins as Professor Abraham Van Helsing, and Keanu Reeves as Jonathan Harker. And the closing credits theme was called Love Song for a Vampire, written and performed by Annie Lennox, became an international success. So the criticism being that Keanu Reeves' uh, English accent was a little, I mean, it is what it is, it's Keanu Reeves. You can't hate the guy, he's a, a good actor when he wants to be. He wasn't a terrible actor in this, but yes, the British accent was uh, atrocious. <laughs> and they, I mean, he tried. I mean, he, he showed up and he tried. But it's not what I, it's not why I like this film. This film, it has it all. It has the ambiance, the scenery, uh, the period piece in the beginning uh, when he was, when Gary Oldman was, um, a part of the Order of the Dragon. Uh, the variations of uh, the vampire that he is, the bat creature, um, the younger version, the old his old self, the monster, the rats. It's all great. The whole thing is uh, an incredible movie. Um, and if you haven't seen it, you're living under a rock and you need to go see it. You can find it anywhere. And Francis Ford Coppola being one of the best directors, one of the best top five directors at least in uh, the United States in cinematography. It, it helps the credibility of this film because it's great. So that's my top five favorite vampire films. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content. And like I had said in the beginning, I do pray for everybody's health and happiness. And hopefully we can get through this. But I have a good feeling that we will. But until next time, this is Marshall Mainsales. And keep it locked.